And all five fans, we are set to go. Three rounds scheduled in the welterweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's a mixed martial artist, standing 5 feet 11 inches tall. Weighing in over the welterweight limit at 173 pounds. He steps into the cage tonight for the 41st time, bringing 27 victories, 13 defeats. From Chelmsford, Essex, England, here is Jack the Stone Mesa. And next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. His background is in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Judo. At six feet, one inch tall, he weighed in at the welterweight limit, 171 pounds. His professional record, 15 victories with eight defeats. Fighting out of Gothenburg, Sweden, by way of Brazil, here is Bruno B.C. Carvalho. <laughs> Referee in charge, Mark Goddard. International referee Mark Goddard about to get this one underway. Bruno Carvalho in the black shorts. Jack Mason in the purple. You want to talk about big welterweights. Both these guys competed at middleweight. Now making the drop into this division. These are two huge men at 170. The unit alarm definitely needs to be sounded. Bruno Carvalho, Jack Mason finally meeting in the Cage Warriors cage. Mason starting with a jab, Carvalho answers with a nice set of punches, tagging Mason there. Definitely the reach advantage for Carvalho. How Carvalho makes welterweight is absolutely beyond me, a huge individual. They're both looking monster for 170 pounds, it's like, good lord, they look like 205 pounders. Probably they are, they probably are 205 now, but you know what I mean. Mason competing for many years as a middleweight. Made the move down to welterweight on Cage Warriors. Yeah, very uncharacteristically missed weight uh, yesterday, I believe, which is not like Jack Mason. He's become very comfortable making this 170 pound mark over the past five, six, seven nod fights here. Caballo's starting to find success with that overhand, his overhand right when he comes out to the jab. He's been able to get that kind of up, arching out of the way. So Jack Mason doesn't see it and it's raining down on him. But other than that, it's just been kind of the feeling out period. Well, Josh, we saw it last time for Bruno Carvalho. We, we spoke about it before, a little bit slow to start perhaps. Mason too can be accused of being a slow starter sometimes. Yeah, it's something both these guys have done is, you know, their pace throughout three rounds. Oh. You know, sometimes they both oh. fall into that kind of counter-punching, plodding mentality. And I think whichever one goes forward and really asserts himself first in this fight, it's going to be a big upper hand for them. A couple of heavy strikes landed there, though. But Bruno Carvalho, kick to the front of the thigh, the oblique kick. Oh, he's a been couple picking of punches on too. that, hasn't he? He's been picking on that front knee already of Mr. Mason. A lot of respect here between these two men. Mason now, letting the hands go a little bit more. You can see though, he's almost punching to the chest of Carvalho. Got to go a little bit higher and find that chin. We'd love to hear your predictions for this fight if you're watching at home. Use the hashtag Super Saturday at Cage Warriors on Twitter. Bruno Carvalho with a nice left hook there. Another left hand from Carvalho, Mason firing right back though. Yeah, it's a nice long left hook as well, really putting Mason on the end with some rangy strikes. I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss because I'm just kind of sitting watching. Neither one's really, there it is. There, now he hits with all three of them, uppercuts. It still seems like they're still trying to find how they want to fight each other, you know what I mean? But right when I say that, of course, Bruno decides he's gonna uncork that three-punch combination, and all of them are in range. Mason landing with the right hand there. Yeah, it was a lot better for Mason, just finding the right hand straight down the middle. We so often see Mason looking for the tail. Oh, oh, he lands a big overhand right though. And that's gonna give him some confidence in these exchanges. Someone needs to learn to keep their hand, one hand up while the other one's punching. And Stone came in and was able to land that right. 
Good job. You see straight away he starts upping the work rate with the punches he's throwing. As you said, Brad, hopefully gaining some confidence from finding the mark a couple of times. Well, it was the overhand right from Grell. Gail Grimaud, which knocked out Bruno Carvalho and Jordan. Oh, big knee from Carvalho. Mason took that right on the chin and that might have hurt him. Carvalho unloading now, lands an uppercut. Again, looking to flurry, but Mason getting a few moments to recover here. Oh, big oh. left hand there it from making, Carvalho. It's making some sounds. It was excellent work from Bruno Carvalho to bring those knees in as Mason tried to close the distance. Perfect range for the much taller Brazilian Swede to bring the knees up through the middle and meet the chin of Mason. And these striking exchanges seem to have woken the fight up. Again, the straight shot from Carvalho landing nicely, that kick to the knee. And Jens, we can see it reddening a little bit now at the front. Yeah, it's got to be. I mean, that's going to get really irritating, constantly stepping on, you know, trying to kick on that front knee. What I like to see more than anything is Mason. He's got to set up a little bit, maybe get behind that jab more and fire that open hand, that overhand right. It's just missing. Just wants want to see him land it. But Carvalho, he's doing a good job and hopefully not getting too lackadaisical. He's landing his combination, but his, his chin is up. He's got his head up in the air. And if Mason can somehow, in the middle of that combo, fire that overhand right, might be ch changed it up. Well, let's check out some of the action from that first round. And the straight punches here from Carvalho. Yes, a few tentative moments from both guys. Really the most significant action, Bruno Carvalho catching Jack Mason and putting the knees to use. That's probably enough maybe to nick him that first round. And Mason landing that nice right hand. He landed a couple of those throughout the round, but as you say, Josh, perhaps the best work done on the feet by Bruno Carvalho. Just got a little bit more out of those striking exchanges and a big, big knee there from Bruno BC Carvalho. Second of five, second of three five minute rounds. Five five-minute rounds in tonight's title fight. We've already seen one on Super Saturday. We're going to be treated to a lightweight title fight later on. Second of three five-minute rounds here, though. Jack Mason in the purple. Bruno Carvalho in the black. Brad Warden, Josh Palmer, and Jens. Little oh, evil pull. Oh, oh, it's a huge left hand from Carvalho. Mason goes down. Mason tries to close the distance coming off that. Bruno Carvalho's wise to it, and Mason is having to scramble for everything he's worth here. Carvalho bounces. Mason hanging in there. Big knee from Carvalho. Mason firing back. Still in the fight. Straight punches again from Carvalho, though. Mason lives to fight another day, Jens. Yeah, he does. Now he's just got it there. There's that overhand right there. I'd like to see him throw. Gets his head down, but Carvalho. When he, he uncorked that right hand, left hook, oh, it was, I mean, they just hit dead on the mark. Turning into a dog fight here at Super Saturday. Mason doubles up on the jab, straight as a piston. Carvalho counters. Oh, good work from Mason to find the clinch, but he's going to have a hard time taking down the judo black belt. This is where we see Jack Mason do so much of his good work, closing the distance, grinding away. Trying to rip his man off the cage for takedowns, really running that clock down and scoring points. It's interesting though, isn't it, Jens? You can, you can see there's still the opportunity for Mason in those exchanges. Carvalho's chin is still way up in the air, and that overhand right, oh, that really could find the mark. He's, he's turkey neck. You, you know, are, get out. the turkey sees it, they pop that neck straight up, and they kind of look over the log, he got the turkey neck. So when he's boxing, when, he, when he's punching, yeah, he's got his... His chin gets a little higher, his head gets up a little more, his neck gets extended out. Come on, guys. Just waiting for an overhand right. Let's do some of that position. There's What's a little bit of gamesmanship there from Bruno Carvalho. Looking at referee Mark Goddard as if to say, get me out of here. Mark Goddard having none of it. Yeah, Jack Mason's got to make this position pay. He's having the time to recover, to slow the pace of this fight down. But he's got to stay active, and there's a bit of a break there. I was going to say, notice his head was not in the pocket. <laughs> As I supposedly... <laughs> the phrase of the night, head yeah. in the pocket, brought to you by Jens Pulver. Uh. Mason punching his way out of that one. 
Double jab in with that right hand could be. It wants to find a home. The first of three big welterweight fight his oh. here at Super Saturday. Countered the leg kick with the right hand down the pipe. Textbook stuff from Mason. Going back to the jab now is the Englishman. Good left, left hook from Mason. Top. All these shots over the top of the incoming strikes. They're starting to find a home now. He's starting to step in just a little more. He's getting into that range. He's stepping in. A little more comedy, starting to find that. And yeah, they're starting to land. Cavallo's not moving as much. He's not throwing his three punch, four punch combinations. He's kind of standing there to be hit. It's interesting. Look at how, look at how far out he's trying to parry the hands coming in. Mesa finding a home for these shots now. Big punches from Jack Mason. Cavallo looking a little bit confused here. Oh! Stung him again. Still in the fight though. Here's Bruno Cavallo. Mason looking to close the distance and clinch, but I think he's going to earn a takedown. It's not going to be an upper body clinch, especially with the judo background. And the, the, just the sheer mass of Bruno Carvalho. He's going to have to change level really decisively. We saw judo versus judo when he took on Gal Grimaud, and Grimaud hit that incredible hip toss. Mason, though, more of a double leg guy. Yeah, real rugby tackle entry is what we usually see from Jack Mason. New territory for Mason as well. He's used to being able to steamroll his opponents, being able to run them into the cage, rip them onto the floor. But as you say, Josh, with the judo black belt, Put such a strong fence, base. Put your fingers in the fence, Josh. Mason mixing it up. Lead hand to the body first that time. Still trying to land the right over the top, though. Yeah, as y'all looking, huh? Everybody's looking for that right hand. It's you just it's almost it's almost there it's almost perfect you know because Cavallo again is just not moving the way he was and when he wants to start trying to land just one punch he's looking to land that one that one two final 10 seconds of the second round much better game Mason round. ups the pace Mason. doubles up the jab is it enough though and another very intriguing round to call, Josh. It's going to be very tight for the judges if this goes the full three fives, which it's looking like it may very well do at this pace. The gut feeling is that Melson, uh, Jack Mason maybe just got the better of those striking exchanges in that one. He landed that right hand a lot. We got some left hands in there as well. Let's take a look at some of those shots now. Bruno Carvalho, though, with that left hand that really did stagger Mason early on in the round. Yeah, what a good combination that was right on the chin, but Mason found the mark a few times with this overhand right. Beautiful combination there from Bruno Carvalho. Countered the leg kick with a the right hand there, did Mason. Left hand over the top, just on the point of the chin. I mean, our judges are really going to have to be watching this strike rate closely because it's a very close one to call at the moment. Yeah, right now there's too many one punches or two punches. Final, final, just drawing we need the somebody to put those combinations together and just kind of step up and take over on this fight. It's kind of, I don't know, it's definitely, it's a lot more even than I thought it was before, especially after this last round. Someone's going to have to take charge. The cage door is locked. Bruno Carvalho in the black, Jack Mason in the purple. Third and final round here at Cage Warriors 69 Super Saturday. That oblique kick working very well for Carvalho to try and keep Mason at range. Obviously having the much bigger reach, he wants to keep it just a few inches out of Mason's grasp. Grueling pace set, oh, and big right hand by Cavallo there. That stung Mason. And you're seeing Cavallo oh. come up with those uppercuts as well whenever Mason ducks his head looking to charge. Yeah, I suppose that's one thing, neither guy has really mixed their punches up too much. Both being quite predictable with the same strikes, the same kind of tempo as well. Yeah. So I just need someone to grab hold of this. You're right, that's what I mean, it's just they got they're throwing the same three punches. They haven't changed anything up. So, you know, the little front kick might have been, that's been the most. Cavallo changed up a little bit. But right now, it's just, 
Who's gonna just, okay, you know what, let's make this ugly for about five seconds. Let's just get this, let's get nasty. Well, there was a nice left hook there from Kavara and Josh. As we saw in Denmark, Kavara again not looking for the takedowns, not looking for the trips. No, uh, very surprised indeed. I mean, Jack Mason, you know, he's got very good wrestling. But you kind of figure Brian Cavallo must think he's got a bit of a submission edge. And again, we've just seen him try and out point on the feet. And it's making this a lot closer fight. Probably worth pointing out that taking down Mossadari, perhaps a, a different prospect to taking down someone yeah, like Jack Mason I mean, with that, that skill set. He's not called the stone for no reason. I mean, the guy is a phenomenal wrestler, pretty much immovable. Tripling up the jab that time. Got to put something significant behind it though. Mason needs something big here in this third round. He's got to put his stamp on the final frame. Cavallo trying to catch the leg. Mason staying right in his face though. Making Carvalho work for it. Halfway through the third and final round. Still anybody's fight, everything to play for here at Super Saturday. The first of three huge welterweight bouts. I mean, that uppercut, Bruno Kamala's thrown it a few times, but he's thrown it from the same position. It's never really breaking the line, or just changing the angle that little bit to just really make all the difference as it screws up through the middle. Oh, if it just, if they were just a half, you know, I was just sitting there thinking about like, Half an inch, well, he's just half an inch too short on 18 punches that would have landed. You know, it's like they're just so close, so close, you know. Some really close rounds here. Would I wonder if a 10-10 might pop up on a judge's scorecard oh. and that could change everything. Yeah, I've got, I've got to be honest, I've got no idea which way this is going. Big right hand from Mason there. Him. Now he might get a little closer. See, too far away. 90 seconds left to play with here in this welterweight contest. Carvalho landing again. Mason coming at him, trying to get the dog fight going once again. Big knee from Carvalho right up the middle. Mason does dip his head when he comes in. We've seen Carvalho. Uncork that uppercut, uncork the knee a few times. Mason needs to be wary of that in these exchanges. In both corners trying to impress upon their fighters the urgency of just how little time is left in this fight and how close it's got to be. Final 60 seconds here at the Kentish Town Forum. They were 45 seconds in the beginning and after that it's just been kind of, they got into their lull and they've just been, really they've been sitting through there the whole time. I think that the, the real, it's just been the same tempo. Yeah. There's been no tempo change, no pace change from either guy, so it's made it a bit methodical and perhaps a little bit plodding where it didn't need exactly. to be. Yeah, that's it, that's exactly. Yeah. Crisp left hand landed from Mason there. Final 30 seconds of the round. Can one of these welterweights put a stamp on the fight? Mason with the left hand. Pushes his man off, trying to find the oh. range. Carvalho swinging, nothing landing cleanly for BC. Final 10 seconds. Are we going to see a shootout? Carvalho landing twin right hands. That's swinging in the pocket. It's not for lack of trying. For the finish here at Super Saturday. And it doesn't come. We go to the judges. And what a task our judges have, Josh. Yeah, they really do. I've got no idea which way that one's going to go. Both guys finding the chin of the other. Who did more damage? Who landed with more frequency? I honestly haven't got a clue about that one. A little bit of a varied output from Carvalho. He did mix it up a little bit more than Mason, but the shots that Mason did land, the left hooks, the overhand rights, they found their mark, they found their home, and they landed sweetly. They did, but I mean, if you got you got to pick who perhaps stumbled the other a bit more, let's have a look at some of these replays. Carvalho rock Mason two or three times, particularly with that left hook. Nice right hand there from Carvalho. Another left hook and the uppercut again. Mason's head dipping slightly when he comes in and Carvalho trying to take advantage, but there's the big right hand from Jack Mason. Slipped a punch there, but took a knee. I think it just grazed him that one. Nice left hook from Mason, caught Cavallo coming in, put the brakes on him. 
Another left hook there for the stonemason. This was some good cuffing behind the head from Bruno Cavallo. Both guys really trying to turn it on for the last 10 seconds, but it did go the full three rounds. Our judge is still rendering their decision at cage side. I don't blame them, it's a tough one to call here. So, so close. And we have a decision, and we'll throw it to Joe Martinez to find out just what that decision is. And now, fight fans, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. David Leatherby scores at 29-28 for Mason. Barry Oglesby, 29-28, Carvalho. And Ben Cartledge has it, 29-28. Your winner by split decision, Jack the Stone Mason! Jack Mason takes a split decision, 29-28 on two scorecards. A very happy Jack Mason is with Jens Pulver.